Good morning to you, our wonderful viewing audience on this morning. Me and Pastor Amy, we are so excited because this entire week, we have a special treat for you. We have a special guest with us this entire week that will be ministering the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. His name is Minister Radico Roberts. He is the son of Pastor Rudy Roberts in Freeport, Bahamas, the pastor, the senior pastor of Whole Man Christian Center. And this entire week, Minister Radico, he is going to be ministering to you. This young man is the husband of one wife. He have a handsome son at the age of 12 and two young beautiful daughters. His lovely wife, Minister Shadeva. What an awesome couple. And this entire week, God have chosen and handpicked Minister Radico Roberts to minister to you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This man is, young man is highly anointed, flows in the prophetic gifts. And I am telling you, without a shadow of a doubt, you are going to be blessed and blown away this entire week. As I sat in the studio and as he ministered under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God filled the studio several times this week. And without any further hesitation, help me welcome to this morning prayer broadcast, Minister Radico Roberts. God bless you. Well, blessings to you. And good morning to you. Grace and peace be to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Radico Roberts, and I've been blessed and privileged by Pastor Sean Pender to be your, your guide today as we just get into the glory and the presence of the Lord. I consider it an honor anytime God allows you to speak in his stead. I consider it an honor with no higher privilege in this life than to be able to speak in the stead of God. And so Pastor Sean Pender has deemed me and trusted me this week to teach you on this uh, quick morning series. And our series uh, for the next seven days is going to be very simple. The power of praising Jesus when it's ugly. The power of praising Jesus when it's ugly. The power of praising Jesus when it's ugly. Our scripture base is going to be Genesis 29, and we're going to be in there every single day for the next seven days. Genesis 29, and I'm going to walk you through this scripture, and you will never see this scripture the same when I get done. And I'm going to show you the power of praising Jesus when it is ugly. Genesis 29, again, will be our scripture base, and I'm going to walk you through the entire thing. So what I'm going to do today uh, in, our, in our first session is read the entire scripture, the entire scripture, so that you can get a gist of where we're going. The power of praising Jesus, again, is the title, when it's ugly. And Genesis 29 says, Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of uh, that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone um, from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. Verse 4, Genesis 29, I'm in the King James. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, uh, Know ye Laban the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it the time that the cattle should be gathered. Water ye the sheep, and go feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll uh, the stone from the well's mouth, then we will water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock, watch this, of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was his father's brother. 
and that he was Rebecca's son. And she ran and told him, Father, stay with me. It's an unusual amount of scripture, but stay with me. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said unto him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. Watch this. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Watch this. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed. But Rachel was beautiful. And Jacob said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Again, the title of our series this week is going to be The Power of Praising Jesus When It's Ugly. Friends, I want to share with you that we have a very powerful scripture here that sounds like just a common story, but it's more than a common story. Because this scripture shows the expectation for us in the kingdom of God. The scripture shows the, the attitudes and the attributes that God really looks for in true kingdom people. Here we have a story of a, of a young man named Jacob who's in search of love. And as he's in search of love, he, he had, there's some prophetic instructions that go before his life. And he's told that he's going to go into this certain city and, and there he'll meet his wife. And he comes into the city and, and here it is. He is face to face with his prophecy. He meets Rachel. He loves Rachel. Rachel is beautiful. She's so beautiful that he fell down on his knees and began to worship God when he saw her. She must have been beautiful. I mean, the man broke out in worship and began to shout, Hika! when he saw her. He quickened in the Holy Spirit and he began to worship God. And the Bible says that he threw this stone off the well. Now, here's what you need to know. It would normally take three to four men to move this stone off the well. But this man had supernatural strength when he saw this woman. That's how beautiful she was to him. That he went to the well and threw the stone off himself. The reason why the other men were waiting is because normally they would wait, stay with me, to move this well. And he saw her and he, and, 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 and he worshipped and he kissed her. And then he came in contact with her father. And her father says to him, listen, yes, we are family. You're in the family. He says, but I, I want you to serve me, but I want you to determine your wages. And pay attention to this. R R Jacob says, I want to serve you, but my wages will be Rachel. Saints, this is very powerful. He says, I want to serve you, but my wages will be Rachel. Many of us, we, we all serve the Lord. In this scripture, Rachel represents the beautiful things in life. But the, verse, but the scripture says that Leah was tender-eyed in verse 17. So Leah is going to represent the ugly things in life. And in this scripture, you're going to see that Jacob is you and I. He's the son. Laban all week is going to be symbolic of the father, God. So if we take these substitutes and put them in, then you're going to see that God the father says, listen, I want you to serve me, but I want you to determine what are you willing to serve me for? And in essence, Jacob responds and says, I'll serve you, but I'll only serve you as long as the beautiful things in life happen to me. He said nothing about Leah, who in this text is the ugly things in life. Saints, God wants you to understand something very scriptural and very important here. When you say that you are kingdom, you mean that you are all in. Kingdom doesn't mean that you only serve the Lord and love the Lord when things are beautiful. Kingdom means that you serve the Lord all the time. There are too many people that only want to be in ministry. There are too many people that only want to be blessed by God so they can have more things. They only want to be blessed by God. They only want anointing. They only want prophetic for selfish things and for selfish gains. But understand this. In the kingdom of God, great things happen when you serve God through all things. As we go on in this text, the Bible says, watch this now. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy daughter. Stay with me. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee. Watch this. Then thou should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years, verse 20, Genesis 29, for Rachel. And they seemed to be but a few days for the love he had for her. Verse 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife for my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. And Laban said, gather together all the men of the place and the men of the, uh, of the feast. And it came to pass in the evening that they took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. 
and he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done to me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then thou hast beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be done so. Watch this. In our country, to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee also for the service which thou shalt serve another year, another seven years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave Rachel his daughter's Bilhah, his handmaid and her handmaid. Jacob goes and serves and fulfills his time, and he gets to the honeymoon night. He's expecting to get Rachel, but he gets Leah. Watch this now. And he goes in and he has a time with Leah. And then he wakes up in the morning and he comes before the father and he says, What is this you've done to me? When I decided to serve you, I was serving you for the blessings and the beautiful things. But now I'm going through trials and tribulations and crisis. And I didn't sign up to go through anything. I only signed up to be blessed. And the father says, In our country, you must be tested before you're blessed in our country you must be proven before you're used the father says i don't know where you come from but in this kingdom you cannot be blessed until you've been tested and he says you should know that you should know that the ugly things in the kingdom come before the beautiful things he said you should know that leah must go before rachel you should know better i'm never gonna put a product on the podium that's not been proven or tested i came to tell you this morning listen a faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted and God is not looking for some materialistic, superficial, surface believers. In this last move of God, God is going to raise up some people that have been through the fire. The people that have been through the war, but still kept praising. People that have been through ups and downs, but still kept praising. God is looking for valley dwellers to stand on the mountain. Not mountain dwellers that have not been in valleys. And I want to share with you right now, you might be going through something ugly. You might be facing a situation. You may have yet to receive your report or your financial breakthrough. Your marriage might be in trouble, but God is saying to you right now, sometimes you got to go through the ugly before you can appreciate the beautiful. And I want to encourage you to know you have not been forsaken. You're still in the will of God. And God is shaping your character, shaping your destiny, shaping your message, shaping your ministry, shaping your faith, shaping your glory shaping your anointing shaping your belief so you can stand when it matters saints right now wherever you are wherever you are i wanted you to clap and give god some glory because the next seven days is about to get ugly and somebody's gonna praise god out of the ugly situation and you're gonna see the miracle that is being shifted the miracle is being shaped the miracle is being worked in your life wherever you are in your car in your home wherever you are i want you to stop and shout glory they kind of shout glory Shaka. say i shall not be moved like a tree planted by the rivers of water shout glory ah, let's pray Handasha, father in the name of jesus christ i pray that you release an uncommon anointing an uncommon glory upon these here your people let everybody under the sound of this broadcast and sean pender ministries receive a new level of glory and a new level of breakthrough shift their perspectives father may they go from complaining to understanding may they stop saying why is this happening to me but shift it to what is god trying to teach me i pray heavenly father right now that endurance that faith that patience that power is released all over their household in the name of jesus and whatever the individual's situation may be how ugly it may be may they understand that you're simply perfecting their character you're simply perfecting their integrity the kingdom of god can't afford to platform anything that can't last let them know that they're being built to last father and i bless you right now that perspective will change over each and everybody because the most important thing in life is not the happenings that's the outside but rather what is happening 
So I pray right now that every single one of these people, hallelujah, you, Lord God, would repent of complaining and murmuring and negative confession and understand, Father God, a faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Give us a new kingdom perspective to realize that before we can step into all you have for us, we're going to go through something ugly. But I bless you that we're all learning the power of praising Jesus when it's ugly. And by the end of these seven days, their perspective on trials and tribulations and suffering and testing will never be the same. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you were encouraged today. And we just simply want to give you an introduction to what we're tapping into. But by the end of this week, you'll have a different perspective. And you will see why God is using what he's putting you through to shape you. God bless you. Thank you again, Pastor Sean Pinder, for uh, trusting me and giving me this opportunity to share with your people. Thank you, people, for trusting the Spirit of the Lord upon me. And I pray that you take this knowledge and shift it into understanding. And I pray that that understanding becomes wisdom. Apply this perspective today. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, as we go a little bit further into the power of praising Jesus when it's ugly. God bless you. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and the link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. And listen, remember to share this broadcast with at least five people. Help us reach a million people a month with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share it through WhatsApp, Snapchat, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, however you guys do it. Help me to help me to reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never forget me and Pastor Amy, my beautiful wife. We love you. We appreciate you. We're praying for you. We'll see you again on tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.